with up to 24 cores, a miniature giant GPU with lots of video memory, there's support for up to eight displays, plus the ability to RAID SSDs and support ECC memory. There is so much going on in this compact workstation that we had to do a video for it. So let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is the Dell Precision 3280 Compact Workstation. And yeah, this thing is fast. In fact, we've been using this thing as a miniature AI workstation for a while now, and I'm not even sure that that was really the intent of the system, but it turns out it does pretty well. And one of the craziest things is that as we were testing the system, we were just plugging in random components and we found some things that Dell doesn't even talk about that this system can do. Now, of course, I like to get into the hardware, but a lot of folks like to see pricing, so we're gonna put that up front. Now, we have an ultra high-end configuration with things like the NVIDIA RTX 4000 ADA SFF edition in here, and that really adds a ton to the price, like thousands of dollars, but on the other hand, I think the lowest cost that we've seen for this type of system with an NVIDIA GPU, like used or refurbished, I think was um, like somewhere in the 1100 and change dollars range. Now I know that's out of the budget range of some folks. So there are other options, specifically the older generations of these. So for example, we already did a video on the Dell Precision 3260 Compact and we'll have one coming up soon on the Precision 3240 Compact. These things we've gotten with GPUs, extra NICs and stuff that people have customized and we've got them for like 300 bucks, right? So we are gonna have a video on the 3240 coming up in a little bit, but I wanted to do a video on this high-end one because uh, you know, just AI is so big these days. I think it's really cool. So with that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so let's start with the outside of the system. And one of the first things I wanna point out is just, you can see right here that the 3240 and 3260 were a little bit more compact than the new compact workstation. You can see that we have like, you know, maybe about a hands width extra. Although it is compact, what Dell had to do was they actually had to increase the size of the chassis a little bit because they're offering a lot more features. And also I think a lot more uh, just performance and power consumption uh, or TDP in a small form factor like this. Okay, so starting at the front of the system, you're gonna see that we have our little power button, but then we have a couple cool features. Like for example, we have a universal audio port on the front. So if you wanna go plug in like a headset or something like that, you can do that. Then there are two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. So 10 gigabit per second ports. There's also a USB-C or USB Type-C 20 gigabit per second port, which is a two by two port because sometimes you just wanna go faster. Also, just as a quick fun one, this could be either horizontal or it could be vertically mounted and you'll notice that the Dell logo looks right when it's vertically mounted but when we put it on its side you'll see that the port labeling as well as the precision branding those all look right when it's horizontal okay now on the sides uh, you know we of course get vents but one thing I want to point out is that you do want to look if you especially if you're gonna buy this later on where it's less expensive you're gonna see that we have a vpro sticker here now the vpro is important because that's what gives us out-of-band management and remote manageability so of course if you have a large enterprise and you want to remotely manage systems then that's useful. But also if you just have a single system and you just want that not necessarily as good as like an IPMI out of band management interface, but something that's at least better than nothing, then, you know, we have vPro. Okay, now on the back, we have our DC power input and these take the same bricks that you would see on like a laptop or something like that. Just a pretty big one. We'll show you that in a bit. We also get three display ports. Then we get an array of five USB type A ports. Now there are two of them that are USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, so five gigabit per second. And then we get three of them that are 10 gigabit per second. One of the cool things is that you'll notice that Dell actually labels their ports very, very well throughout the system. But for some reason, that fifth port doesn't have a label, which is just kind of weird. Now, because we have vPro, that means that we only get one gigabit ethernet because it's still using the Intel i219LM, which we've been seeing for forever. I really wish that Intel worked with its ecosystem and got to at least two and a half gig ethernet because, you know, frankly, it just kind of feels like that'd be a little bit more modern. You'll also notice that we have an HDMI port in the optional port, which means that our Intel iGPU is powering four display outputs. Now, you'll also see that we have this like dual expansion slot over here, which is a little different than some of the previous generations. But the really cool thing here is that you can see that we have an NVIDIA GPU. Now that NVIDIA GPU we'll get to when we get inside, but it is providing four mini display ports, which means that this system could power up to eight displays. That's crazy. Now I know there are folks out there that'll say, I don't need eight displays, but on the other hand, there are other people that'll be like, yeah, I definitely need eight displays, whether that's, you know, they can have more stock charts up or, you know, they're doing some other types of applications, or maybe they're just using this for something like a huge digital signage array. That's kind of a cool capability when you can drive eight displays out of something that's so small. Now we're gonna show you the power consumption in a sec, but I do wanna show you the power brick 
because it is huge. This is a 280 watt power brick. It's just, it's ginormous. And so one thing that is a little bit different between this and something like a newer Mac mini or also the Mac studio, which is not necessarily that much bigger than the system is that Dell is using their external laptop-ish power bricks rather than using an internal power supply. So that's just something that's a little different when you talk about Dell versus the Mac. And oh, by the way, we have the new Apple Mac Studio M3 Ultra with 512 gigabytes of memory in the studio as well. But I still think this is actually a really cool system. So that's why we're doing a video for it. With that, let's get inside the system to see what's going on. So first things first, if you want to get inside, there's just a single screw here. This is super easy and something that I don't know why a lot of the like smaller mini PC vendors just can't figure out. You actually just unscrew this little thumb screw here and then you can see this little clip. This little clip, by the way, is there so you can wrap your power cord in there and it helps lock your power cord so you don't like accidentally pull the power cable out. That's something that, again, I don't know why other mini PC vendors can't just uh, do the same thing, right? It seems, seems so obvious. And then once you've done that, you can just pop the lid off and once you do that, you're in Inside. Now, if you saw our Precision 3260 compact video, you'll notice that we had a much smaller thermal solution, but this definitely has a larger one because you'll see on top, we have our memory and CPU. And then on the bottom, we have our GPU as well as our storage and our networking. So to get to the CPU heatsink, and uh, you know, if you wanted to see the socket or something like that, you would just go and you squeeze this right here and the nice little fan shroud pops off. Now, once you do that, you can see that we have our heatsink which cools our 14th gen Intel Core CPU. And then we also have over here our memory. Now we have two DDR5 SO DIMM slots. And this is one place where things get a little bit interesting. Now we don't have this, but if you were to go to the Dell spec sheet, you would see that there are memory options for up to 64 gigabytes of ECC memory. But while we were on that spec sheet, we also noticed that there were options for up to 64 gigabytes of memory. And that, um, that didn't seem like enough, right? So we got our trusty 248 gig DIMM for 96 gig kit from Crucial. And we tested it on here. Of course it worked because why wouldn't it? And then we also got the new 264 gig DIMM for 128 gigabytes of memory, threw it in here and lo and behold, it worked as well. Now look, I totally get the value of a Dell warranty, but on the other hand, if you just wanted to have more memory than the spec sheet and configurator allow you to, then uh, you, know, you could always just order this with very little memory and then add your own later. Now on the processor side, you can get a 14th gen, it's like a Core i9-14900 with vPro and that's a pretty big deal for the system. Aside from vPro, we get up to, I think, 24 cores and 32 threads because we have those 8P cores with hyper threading. And so that gives us quite a bit of performance. And also, if you just want something with lots of cores, then, well, here you go. But of course, there's other options from Core i7, i5, and all the way down to Core i3. I will point out that if you do want vPro, I think you need to have a Core i5 or better in this system. Now, getting to the PCIe riser and all the M.2 SSDs and stuff, there's a feature that I'm not super crazy about. And I guess even with the larger chassis, they still had to use two screws to hold the PCIe riser in place. I wish that this was just toolless. All the rest of the system feels like it is. So it just feels like, you know, this should be a toolless solution, but instead there are these two little screws. But once you get those out, you can just pop the PCIe riser out and that is where we see the monster of the system by far right this is the nvidia rtx 4000 ada but it's the sff edition which means it's a low profile gpu and let me just say this this little thing is cooler than ice i mean not only do you get the four display outputs by adding this as an option but you also have a 20 gigabyte gpu so you have a decent amount of video memory in fact a lot more than many of the consumer ones even if, you know even the larger consumer like geforce cards they don't have 20 gigabytes these days. Of course, you know, if you're at the high end, that's a little different, but still for a compact system like this, getting 20 gigabytes is pretty darn good. Now, if you don't get the GPU and maybe you're buying this second hand later on, maybe you're watching this video in like a couple of years, you definitely want to get this riser, right? Because if you get this riser, not only do you get the slot for a PCIe card, but you also get this second expansion slot that's on this assembly. And, and the reason that, that really matters is if you wanted to do something like convert one of the M.2 two slots into either five gig or 10 gig networking. And then I don't know what the heck else you'd want to do with the low profile slot, but you could do that. And that gives you quite a bit of expandability because you have like, you know, one slot that you could put, I don't know, 25 gig NIC in or something. And then the other slot you could have as a, another one from the M.2 and gives you a 
I don't know, five gig or 10 gig networking. Those are not official Dell like options, but on the other hand, we tried it and you totally can. Of course, our reviews, we were looking at things when they're new, but also what happens to the circular economy when these things become very inexpensive on the secondary market. And that is a really good example of what you can do. Now, I mentioned that you could add a M.2 NIC, but really the cool configuration might be this one right here because you could have two M.2 SSDs and you can even raid them. So you could have raid zero, raid one, whatever the heck you want. And uh, you know that gives a little bit more flexibility. One thing I am a little bit perplexed by is why does only one of our two M.2 Kyoxia SSDs have a heatsink and the other one doesn't? I, I don't really understand that, but that's how it came. And oh, by the way, if you are configuring this as like a corporate buyer and like you work for a company that allows you to get this configuration from Dell, uh, just something to keep in mind is you can also get two four terabyte SSDs, which gives you up to eight terabytes of NVMe storage here. Now, the other little feature, which is kind of neat, is that there's this little Wi-Fi module, of course, under a shield, which a lot of times we just see the module, but this one has a little shield. And something I wasn't expecting when we pulled this off was that this would have the Qualcomm NF765, which is just a, uh, you know, it's a different solution for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth than a lot of these, which would normally we would expect maybe like an Intel AX211 uh, or something like that. So it just feels like a little different and it's kind of cool. Some folks actually prefer the Qualcomm solutions over the Intel. And so they have that as an option at Dell. And for what might be the smallest feature, there is a tiny little speaker on the front of this. I wouldn't say it provides great audio, but you know, it's there. So overall, this is a really cool little package and there's tons of ways that you can expand it from a lower core count to higher core count, higher iGPU performance, adding a bigger GPU, get up to eight displays, RAID on the SSDs, and up to 128 gigabytes of memory in here. This is some absolutely crazy hardware, but let's talk about performance next. Okay, so talking about performance of the system, that Intel Core i9-14900, of course, is a massive processor. With 24 cores, 32 threads, this thing absolutely jams in terms of performance. Compared to integrated GPUs, this thing is much faster, of course, but even compared to things like we did a Nook with the RTX 4070 Notebook Edition, and this thing is quite a bit faster than that. In fact, if you're just looking at OpenCL numbers, this actually compares well to the M3 Ultra in that Mac Studio, of course, on the metal side that Mac Studio gets way faster, right? But still, I mean, this is a very like pretty high end actually GPU, even in a pretty small form factor. And one of our team's favorite things to do was to run things like Stable Diffusion or running even just local LLMs because you have a 20 gigabyte memory GPU, right? I mean, that's just, that's awesome in a system like this. Plus you also have a lot of cores. So if you're just doing CPU based AI and you have lots of memory there, um, you know, that's a pretty decent option as well. But all those performance comes at a power cost. So let's get to that next. Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption. Now remember, there is a GPU installed in here, so this is not necessarily a low-end system. At the same time, we're seeing the power consumption somewhere in that 13 to 23 watt. That seems to be the range that this tends to jump around in, at least at idle. And in terms of the overall noise, we're in that like maybe in our 34 dBA noise floor studio, and we're somewhere in that like maybe 36, 37 dBA range. So overall, very, very quiet system when it's at idle. Now, when we run this thing under load, I think the highest we got it to is about 238 watts. There's probably some more room, right? If you plug in more USB devices or you know run different applications or what have you, you might be able to get that a little bit higher, but there is a good reason that this thing has a giant honking 280 watt power brick because it certainly needs it. And of course, if you're running both the CPU and GPU at full bore, expect that you're gonna hear somewhere in that mid 40 dBA range on our noise meter here. So of course, if you're used to a one liter PC with a microprocessor, something like that, this is gonna be a lot higher power consumption, but it's also gonna be a lot lower performance and that's really the idea here. Okay, now in all of these videos, I like to have key lessons learned. Like what do we learn with the system, right? So I think there are definitely a couple things. Like one, the form factor is a little bit bigger and it uses more power than previous generations. But on the other hand, the fact that we can get ECC memory support, I think a lot of people are gonna like that because that's missing in a lot of mini PCs. The vPro, if you know, you can go look up what vPro is if you don't know, but vPro does provide some kind of out of band manageability, which I think is good. I do wish that they had faster networking because one gig is just too slow these days. But I think the star of the show was really that NVIDIA RTX 4000 ADA, the SFF card with 20 gigabytes of VRAM. I mean, that is just an awesome little card and frankly made the system way more exciting than I think it would have been otherwise. Now, I know that a lot of folks are gonna say, hey, 
in the mini PC space or mini compact workstation space, you know, there's Apple solutions, there are HP solutions, there's Lenovo, there's all these tiny mini PC vendors and stuff. And so what really differentiates this? Well, I think a couple things. Like, first off, this solution provides all of these features. And not only does it provide the hardware features, but of course, if you are a enterprise or a business that wants things like five years of next day, somebody shows up to fix this thing, you can get that kind of support with Dell. And, you know, with a lot of mini PC vendors, especially especially smaller ones, if you need support, like, you know, you're emailing somebody hoping that they show up, Dell has solutions just to like come in and just fix these things, right? So that's one thing I just think is really important that folks need to remember that the support that you get with Dell is in a completely different league than some of these smaller vendors that have less expensive systems. I know there are folks that are gonna watch this and be like, I don't care about that. And that's great. That's, you know, awesome. That's why there are different systems out there, but there are other, you know, businesses that they care that if they buy an asset, they wanna make sure, or they lease an asset, they want to make sure that somebody's going to show up and fix it over the next three to five years. For other folks, just the fact that this is in the Dell ecosystem, if you're a Dell shop and you just your company allows you to buy Dell systems, but you have to buy a Dell system, then maybe this is a cool one because it's relatively small, doesn't take a lot of room in your desk or office. There's different mounting options, of course. But on the other hand, you can get a pretty darn good performing machine. And oh, by the way, this also, if you can get it with the GPU, costs a little bit more, sure. But for running local AI, I mean, that is a pretty killer solution. Now, of course, if your budget is a lot more modest, we will have a video on the Dell Precision 3240 Compact, which I think we got two of the systems for like 300 bucks, $310 each. And those are like two generations older than this. So just think about it in terms of, you know, this costs a lot if you get it new, it's less if you get it refurbished or with a lower spec, and then it is much less if you get it in a couple of years. So if you're watching this in three years, this will be a relatively affordable configuration. Now, hey, I'd love to hear what you think of the system. So put that down in the comments, especially if you have an idea of where this would be really cool. Also, if you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.